Hey, I just wanted to take this opportunity to review uh, how to hear Neapolitan six chords, Italian, French, and German augmented six chords, um, and how they are spelled uh, using our movable do system. So, a couple things to know. First of all, they all act as predominant chords. They're all going to be followed by something with dominant function, probably. And uh, so, part of their interest is how they get to that dominant function. Um, all of them can go straight to a cadential 6-4 chord. These three can go straight to a 5 chord, but you will almost never hear a German, excuse me, German chord go straight to a 5, and there's a reason for that. First of all, this outward movement of that augmented 6 is required. So we've got lay in the bass of any of these augmented 6 chords. Lay will be in the bass. That's just how it will be. Fi is the other note that you're going to listen for. And that lay to up to Fi is an augmented 6. So somewhere in the upper voices you're going to hear a Fi. And they will resolve outward. The German, the well, as the International Chord Song says, the German chord resolves le so and fi so. So that leaves you, leaves you very few opportunities, very few alternatives for voice leading uh, for these other two notes. And so in a German chord, me is going to want to resolve down to re. But if you do that right away, you're going to get parallel fifths, and you know that's verboten in most of uh, common practice. So... Um, so in order to avoid those parallel fifths, the German chord will usually go through a cadential 6-4 or some other intermediary chord before it gets to a 5 chord. So if you're listening to a progression and you're thinking, uh, and you hear that it, there's an augmented 6 chord and it goes straight to a 5 chord or a 5-7, then you know that it's probably not a German chord. Okay, I got off track here. Let's just take a look again at how these are spelled. So the Neapolitan chord does not necessarily uh, have to be in first inversion, but you will most often see it that way. And therefore, the, the note you're going to look for in the bass is fa. If it's not fa in the bass, probably not a Neapolitan, certainly not a Neapolitan six chord. The note that's going to stick out to you is the ra. So the Neapolitan chord is, if you spelled it from the root, uh, it would be ra, fa, le. But um, since it's in first inversion, we'll hear it fa, le, ra. That ra is the note that's going to stick out to your ears. And one of the reasons why it will stick out to your ears is that if you're in, say, do, me, so, me, do, ra, ti, do, when it goes to five chord, to a five chord, if it goes straight to a five chord, that ra, the best place for that ra to resolve is going to be down to the T, but that makes this very shocking sounding diminished third. It's the same, it's enharmonic with a whole step, but because it's ra to T, it's a diminished third. And it's a bit shocking to hear. So, um, ra, T, do. Um, and so that is that color that you'll want to listen for and be able to name, go, okay, I know what that color is, that's a Neapolitan chord. And then, um, so with the augmented six chords, again, look for lay in the bass. If there's not lay in the bass, then you have something else going on. Listen for whether there's a phi, so you have that outward movement to so. And then these chords just treat the other notes differently. They all have Do in them, but in German you have Me, and as we discussed, Me, the Me doesn't want to, it, Me wants to resolve down to Re, but you don't want it to do it right away because that would have parallel fifths. So usually we'll have maybe a cadential 6-4, and so the Le can go down to So first, and then the Me can follow, and that way they're not moving at the same time and therefore we don't lose the independence of the voices. Um, the French chord resolves that by going to Re already in the French chord. So the Re is already there, 
Uh, and so obviously the best place for that to do is just to stay on re. Um, and so a French chord is maybe more likely to go straight to five. Um, it doesn't mean that you couldn't go to a cadential 6-4 before it, and you may in fact hear a French chord going to a cadential 6-4 and then, then to a 5 chord. But uh, if you hear an augmented 6 going straight to a 5, it's probably going to be French or Italian, and then you're going to listen to see whether there's a ray or not in there. Um, the Italian solves this problem by doubling dough. 